Right about nuclear slotting into where these old coal-fired plants were going in, I think in uh, the US they're actually currently doing that. They're taking down coal-fired plants and putting in uh, smaller nuclear reactors in there. Now, Chris Bowen stands alone on the world stage among nations that have stronger and better energy solutions than him, many of them built on the back of Australian uranium. Is Bowen really saying that he is smarter than all the energy experts in Europe, Asia and the Americas? Look, there, there have been those sorts of comments. And look, to, to be frank, I wouldn't want to engage in that. I, I, I have no issues with, with people in general. It's the policies that I tend to focus on. And look, from my experience, and I, I've been doing a fair bit of travel recently, looking at particularly places like Korea to see what Korea is doing. And Korea is um, moving back to nuclear. The new president has um, has basically is restarting and reinstating the the various reactors. Even Japan, which of course after Fukushima, uh, that was quite problematic. But people are starting to realise that without nuclear energy, their energy bills are going up and they're, they're suffering other problems as well. So people in Japan are, are actually uh, supporting many of the nuclear reactors being restarted and that that pro program is is happening at the moment. So when we look at these other countries that are doing that, the interesting thing about Korea is Korea is still actually using um, coal and gas, particularly gas, and it has a few relatively recent um, gas technology um, generators that have been established. And these are part of the transition. And I think it's really smart because it means it is a transition rather than sort of a, hoping on a wing and a prayer that this is all going to work. Um, so, look, I, I'm looking to Korea and Japan in particular. Um, I'm also travelling next month to look at uh, Austria and what's happening in Slovakia and, and uh, Hungary as well, because those, those three areas have very different approaches to addressing uh, issues around carbon uh, emissions. And Austria, of course, is very similar to Germany's approach, heavily reliant on renewables. So it'll be interesting to sort of see uh, you know what comes out of this this uh, this trip, um, but but at the same time, look rather than thinking is someone smarter than another, when we look at these examples, and again that question, what is an example of a country that is doing it well with renewables? And Germany, it, only in the forty percent, um, sort of, I think it's around forty six percent at the moment. They're, they've still got a long way to go to get to eighty percent, and they're already having major problems. So I dare dare say we're not far away. Uh, from that happening here. Well, let's have and a given the let's closures. Have, let's have a quick chat about that sure. because it's one thing to have a backup plan about how to structure your energy grid. But what happens if you don't have a plan B and you proceed with the renewables transition without something like nuclear power and you've closed your coal fire power stations and you don't have any gas stations? What happens if you run, if you exceed your energy needs? Then what happens if you've got rolling blackouts, you've got uh, load sharing? How catastrophic is this and how do you get out of it? I think it would be very difficult unless the backup plan included leaving the pre-existing generators sitting there idle, for example. Um, Lebanon is a great example of all sorts of issues with brownouts and blackouts, and this has been ongoing for many years, um, and it creates havoc. Uh, it, it, you just don't know. You can't rely on uh, business as usual. Um, it, it's just very problematic. And, you know, uh, for, for a country as rich as Australia to be experiencing those sorts of issues, I, I, th I think is, is it's quite, it really sort of lacks foresight uh, in terms of the, the reality of this um, agenda to, you know, reduce carbon emissions. I, I think there needs to be a bit more, more of a balanced approach. And like I say, if carbon emissions is the goal, then nuclear should have been on the uh, on the agenda much earlier.